Hey YouTube, it's Curiously Cory, and today I'm going to show you how to build this. A voice enabled timeout timer compatible with both Google Assistant and Alexa, because timeout shouldn't be punishing you too. You can use voice commands to set the timeout time to any interval you want, then the deviant being punished has to put their fingers or hands on both sensors at once for the timer to count down to zero. Let's get started. I'm using nickels to make some capacitive sensors, so I'm going to use a little fine grit sandpaper to take off the top oxide layer. Some flux will help the solder flow easier. Just put your soldering iron on there until it gets really good and hot. The nickel is going to take a lot of the heat out of your soldering iron, so if it doesn't start flowing right away, don't worry about it, just be patient. Once you've got a nice pool of solder on there, go ahead and slip a lead right into the pool of solder and make sure it's covered really well. Warning, touching the coin right now will definitely leave a mark. Now that it's had a few minutes to cool down, we're going to glue a piece of paper to the top to help insulate against static discharge. While Arduino boards have some circuit protection built in, our LEDs don't, and I've actually fried a strip using these same type of sensors before without the insulation. Speaking of the LEDs, I'm using some WS2812B addressable LED strips, which are compatible with the Arduino NeoPixel library. Measuring out the LEDs, I can see 14 or 15 LEDs would fit on here, but to leave room for the wiring and the cloth, I'm going to cut off a segment of 13 LEDs instead for today's project. After cutting the LEDs, the next thing that we need to do is to tin the pads. The electricity and the data will only flow in one direction, so we'll need to attach our wires on the pads the arrows are pointing away from. Add a little bit of solder to the end of each pad, then tin each wire before pressing it into the pad with your soldering iron. I like to work across starting with ground, then data, then power. Now the wires will attach here pretty good, however, to make sure that you don't pull the pads right off, you probably want to reinforce with some hot glue or electrical tape. You can skip this, but I'm going to go ahead and prototype the circuit on the breadboard first. So we're going to take ground and power and run it to the positive and negative rails on the breadboard. Then the sensor signal will go from D0 over to a row on the breadboard. Then from that same row, 100k ohm resistor should go out one way, and our second 100k resistor, starting in the same spot, will go to another row. To the far end of the resistors, we'll plug in our capacitive sensors, then the leads, one running to D1 and the other to D2. For this prototype, I'm going to use some LEDs I already soldered headers onto to make it easier to attach to the breadboard. Ground to ground, data to RX, not D3, and then finally 5 volt to the power rail. Next we need to set up a few cloud accounts to help facilitate our connection between our device and Google Assistant or Alexa. First we're going to use Adafruit IO as our MQTT server. Once you have your account set up and get logged in, you'll be greeted with a screen like this. Click on feeds, then create new feed, and name your feed whatever you want. I named mine Timeout V2. This tutorial assumes you already have your Arduino IDE downloaded and configured for ESP8266 boards and the CH340G drivers installed on your computer. After downloading and opening my sketch on your computer, you'll need to add your AIO credentials to it. On the Adafruit website, click View AIO Key and copy your active key, then paste it along with your username into the sketch. Also make sure to set your network credentials and update the pixel count to however many LEDs you decided to use. Since we're using the ESP8266 board, the pixel pin is actually ignored. Next, we're going to set up an account with If This Then That. Once you're signed up and signed in, click on My Applets, then New Applet. As you can see, you could use Alexa here, but I'm going to set this up with Google Assistant to work with my Google Home Minis. We're going to choose Simple Phrase with a Number. The phrase I'm going to use is, the kiddo needs to go to timeout for pound seconds. And then as a response, I want Google to reply, okay, sending the kiddo to timeout. For our action, I'm going to select add a fruit. The first time you select this action, it will ask you to authorize if this then that to access AIO. Then it will give you a list of feeds from which you should be able to select the one that you defined earlier. 
Click Add Ingredient and select Number Field. Now we can review and finish and test our applet. Hey Google, the kiddo needs to go to timeout for five seconds. There we go. Now I'm going to move the project to a perf board. There's not much to see here, only two components and a handful of leads to run, but I cut a small piece of perf board and attached it directly to the Wemos D1 Mini using a piece of lead that I actually cut off of one of the two resistors. I aligned the bottom row of resistors with the D0 pin so I could just bridge straight across as the sensor source signal. When I cut the other leads off, I saved one, and I used that through the 3.3 volt voltage port just to sort of stabilize the board. Next, I'll run the leads from the sensor side of the resistor to D1 and D2. Now right here I really should have bridged between the sensor leads and the resistors, but I forgot to do that and so I had to go back and fix the problem later. I decided to use some headers to attach the sensors and the LEDs to make assembly easier. A nice little trick is to leave your leads sticking out a little bit where you need to bridge connections. Then just bend them over in the direction that you need to bridge and cut them off right where they just barely touch the component you're bridging onto. Not only is it going to make it easier to actually make the bridge happen, but you're going to use less solder too. Now the main board is all soldered up, so I'm going to go ahead and add some female headers to the LED leads. Same as the LED pads, first tin the leads and then tin the wires and then connect them. Instead of using the same sort of female headers here, I found an old jumper that I wasn't using anymore, cut it in half, and used the, those ends instead. Sometimes more solder is better. Use a little electrical tape or heat shrink to cover the bare connections. Hey Google, the kiddo needs to go to timeout for five seconds. Okay, sending the kid to timeout for five seconds. Now we can move on to preparing our piece of wood. I set my skill saw depth to about an eighth of an inch deeper than the stick that I'm trying to fit in there to accommodate for the LEDs and the fabric that are going to be wrapped around it. Unfortunately, my camera decided not to record that part, but I used the skill saw to cut across the board multiple times, removing most of the material, then ran it sideways back and forth, kind of like a router to take off all of the high points and remove the rest of the material in my channel.
I'm actually really happy with how this worked out. There was a little bit of blowout in one corner, but I'm pretty sure that the fabric will end up covering it up and you won't even notice it in the final product. You can see the channel is just a little bit deeper and wider than the stick the LEDs will mount to, and this will allow for the material. Now I'm going to drill a hole through both pieces of wood for the LED wiring to run through. My drill wandered a little bit here, but since we're wrapping the whole thing in fabric, it'll all be covered up and you won't notice. It was a tight fit, but after a little bit of convincing, I managed to get it pushed through. I decided to use a dark walnut stain here to match the interior decoration of my house. Obviously you can use whatever sort of finish suits your home decor. I like to just take a small piece of a paper towel, about a quarter of a full sheet, wipe the stain all over each side, and then clean off the excess with a clean paper towel. I found this method really gives me a nice even coat that really highlights the features of the wood. Now I'm going to use a drill and countersink the holes for the capacitive sensors. This 7 8 inch spade bit is almost a perfect size for my nickels. Using the speed square to measure up halfway and about an inch and a half in I mark my drill points. Then I just take out just enough with the spade bit to get the sensors to sit flush. Then I switch to a smaller bit to drill the rest of the way through the board. The last step before mounting the hardware, I need to make a pocket on the back of the board to hold the electronics. I'm going to use a similar method to how I dug out the channel on the front, making multiple cuts with the skill saw, then running it back and forth like a router to take off all the high points. This is one of many parts of this project where I really wish I would have had a router. Now just cut out a channel for the USB cable and we're finally ready to put everything together. After briefly attempting to do this the boneheaded way, I put down the razor and picked up the scissors that were just a few inches further away. Now using some hot glue I'll attach the sensors, then reinforce the LED terminals as I had described earlier. Kitchen shears really aren't the best tool for this job, but I'm going to use them anyway to trim the fabric down to roughly the right size. Once it's nearly right, I'll use hot glue to attach one side, starting on the edge and working it over onto the back. Then it's just a matter of trimming and gluing until all four sides are in place. With the LEDs and fabric mounted to the stick, it's actually just slightly too wide for the channel, so I took my razor and trimmed off a few high points along the sides. After that, it fit like a glove. The friction fit was actually tight enough that I don't think I really needed the glue, but for longevity's sake, I went ahead and glued it down. But not before the final function test, as this is the last chance to debug or change things out before it's permanent.
On the back, I carved down another high point that I missed, all the while dreaming of routers. Then I attached the sensor pins and the LEDs to their headers. Now moderately abusing the hot glue gun, I routed the wires in ways where they wouldn't be seen from the front and started just kind of tacking everything in place. This definitely could have been a much cleaner wiring job, but with the end in sight, I pushed through and just got everything secured. Hey Google, kiddo needs to go to timeout for five seconds. And there you go, a voice activated timeout timer. I hope that even if you don't need a timeout timer, you saw ways to use these concepts to make something fun or useful to enhance your life. As always, thanks for tuning in and happy hacking.